There are so many clever intros I could have come up with for this video, but I have to read this directly off UiPath's website and then give my comments. UiPath is a global software company that makes robotic process automation software. It was founded in Bucharest, Romania. And so my question is, why the hell are they not turning a profit, number one? And number two, is this potentially something that Andrew Tate is involved in? Just kidding. I absolutely just could not help myself with the Andrew Tate reference because of course, who the hell knew about Bucharest, Romania until Andrew Tate came with his beautiful shiny bald head onto YouTube and just flooded all of our feeds. However, we are here today to talk about UiPath, the amazing, incredible software company that is yet to produce a single cent in profit. If you're new to this channel, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button now and then drop me a comment down below and say subscribed and I will personally acknowledge your comment and respond to you down below. So looking at the current pricing and since I know you guys prefer dark mode, I will switch over to dark mode for you guys. We are trading at 1249 US dollars. No P ratio, say it with me because they don't produce a single cent in goddamn profit. Right, so no P ratio, price to book 3.71, price to sell 6.58 and price to free cash flow negative 49.34. How the hell a software company operating out of some third world operating bucket shop in uh, Eastern Europe or somewhere thereabouts on the map cannot produce a profit is absolutely beyond me, especially when, uh, let's face it, most software companies during the pandemic have done exceptionally well. So let's have a look at uh, what the analysts are saying. They are talking about uh, 10 hold ratings and four buy ratings. So most of the analysts believing that the stock is actually worth holding on to, unbelievably. Uh, if we have a look at that market cap, 6.56 billion enterprise value, 5.2 billion. And uh, looking at the revenue trading 12 months, 997.8 million. Debt is sitting at 49.12 million. Equity, 1.85 billion. Net income, negative 428.84 million. And cash on hand, most recent quarter, 1.72 billion, with free cash flow sitting at negative 133.1 million. Looking at these shares, we have 546 million shares outstanding. Insiders are holding 11.83%, which is something we always like to see. It's good to see insiders with some skin in the, in the game. This is exactly what we wanna see. Short interest, however, is growing 4.74 and institutional holdings sitting at 64.32. Now, as we come down to the cash flow statements, let's have a look what's going on with the actual money. Operating cash flow, negative 359, 29.18, negative 54, negative 108. Free cash flow has gone negative 380, uh, 25.9, negative 68, negative 133. So pretty much negative except for in 2021 when they seem to do a little bit better. Then as we move across into the balance sheet, uh, assets have gone 508, 866 to 2.57 billion to 2.43 billion. Equity has gone negative 799, negative 803 to 1.92 to 1.85 billion. And then of course my favorite part of all of the financial statements is of course the income statement because I love to see me some money. So top line revenue 336, 607, 892. 997 top line revenue has seen phenomenal growth over the last few years and uh, certainly on those kind of revenue numbers they should indeed be producing a profit how the hell do you make this kind of top line revenue in a software company and not produce a profit this is absolutely mind bending and beyond me so as we come down to gross profit uh, 276 541 763 723 are bigger pardon and 823 so even the gross profits are looking really good i mean they've gone 997 on top line revenue and gross profit of 823 which you would expect from a software company so what the fuck happened where did the money go where did the money go where did the money go i have to ask the question 
Where did the money go? So let's come back and have a look at this. Operating income, my God, negative 570, negative 110, negative 500, negative 403 million. Guys, wrap your goddamn heads around this. Gross profit, 823, and then they lost 403 million. It's like a goddamn Ponzi scheme. Net income, negative 519, negative 92, negative 525, negative 428 million. I think I have the answer. It just popped into my head. I think somebody's buying Bugattis, lots of them, for Andrew Tate. Maybe that's what's happening. I just can't help myself with these Andrew Tate references. I mean, it is Bucharest, Romania, uh, you know. Apparently, they've got beautiful women in lots of churches and a software company that doesn't make actual profit despite turning over shitloads of money. Earnings per share uh, has gone negative 19, negative 99, negative 0.76. On the fundamentals, it's a shit show. 25% P ratio, <laughs> net margin, <laughs> and then net equity is positive because clearly they have some investors. And then shareholders have had the shit diluted out of them over the last few years because they're not making money. Debt, 67%. Debt to equity is actually one of the standout things for this company. 2.66%. But guys, don't get too excited yet because they're using your money to fund their extravagant expansion plans. Current ratio, 4.58, which is phenomenal. Free cash flow to debt is negative. Momentum, 33%. Top line revenue and gross profit is looking good. Top line revenue is amazing, in fact, and the gross profits are, well, mouth-wateringly attractive. But what the fuck happened on operating income, net income, operating cash flow, and free cash flow? It just turned to a shit show. 33% on momentum. Growth. Return on equity, negative 22. Return on asset, negative 10. Return on invested capital, negative 92. <laughs> and then, well... Earnings per share, well, what do we have to say about that? Then if we come down to uh, the summaries, we've got fundamentals uh, sitting at uh, 25%. Debt, the standout for them is the way they're managing debt at the moment, 67. Momentum, 33. And growth sitting at 25%. Just a quick note, if you would like to be notified as soon as we make our Stock Screen app available to the public, go ahead and go to stockscreen.app, click on that dollar icon, it will open up the waiting list, enter your name and email address, and we will notify you as soon as we open this up to the public. If you're looking for the link, you can find it in the description down below. Now let's shift gears a little and have a look at what the analysts are saying on the stock, of course, because my opinion is based very strongly on a company's ability to produce profit. I know it's a foreign concept, right? I only invest in companies that actually fucking make money. I don't know why this is so confusing to people. But anyway, let's have a look at what the analysts have to say. So looking at the analysts, and I'm going to increase this on my screen for you guys a little bit so you can have a look. Revenue is forecast to grow by 16% per year. Well, based on the historical numbers, that may indeed be a reality. Revenue grew by 35% year over year, which is pretty good. Uh, however, none of it converted into actual profit. So as I always say, turnover is vanity and profit is sanity. Trading at a good value versus a peer average price to sales ratio. Well, I think that's debatable. And then risks. Currently unprofitable and not forecast to become profitable over the next three years. And of course, they are talking about shareholder dilution in the last year. And guys, like I always say, if you are a shareholder and you're holding bags on a company that doesn't produce profit, chances are if they're not heading towards profit anytime soon, you as a shareholder can look forward to massive amounts of shareholder dilution because at the end of the day, this is one of the few ways they have to raise money to keep operating. The only other way is to take on debt, and debt is incredibly hard to come by if you ain't producing a profit. So in terms of where I'm at on the stock, personally, I don't like the stock. I think that uh, it's just beyond a belief for me that a software company turning over those kinds of revenue cannot produce a profit. Something is wrong. Something is amiss. And so for that specific reason, I've got to call bullshit on the stock and I'm out.